All right, so example 10 is going to be a pretty intense example. There's, there's a lot to this, and we're going to try and unpack it one, one piece at a time. So if we start just by reading this one, this says studies have shown that people who suffer sudden cardiac arrest, and we can use the acronym for that SCA, have a better chance of survival if a defibrillator shock is administered very soon after cardiac arrest. How is survival rate related to the time between when cardiac arrest occurs and when the defibrillator shock is delivered? Data are given below where Y equaling the survival rate in percent and X equaling the mean call to shock time in minutes for a cardiac rehabilitation center where cardiac arrests occurred while victims were hospitalized. And so the call to shock time tended to be short for four communities of different sizes. And then we have our data, and it says find the least squares regression line, what is the slope, what is the y-intercept. All right, that is a lot to take in. Let's take a step back and try and think what are our variables here, okay? And you can start to see your x's and your y's. I, I, the way the data was presented, it's given pretty clearly, right? They say, well, I have this numerical variable, we see the numbers, average call to shock time, and this new other numerical variable survival rate. And, and just so we're all on the same page, if you don't know what a defibrillator is, if you've ever watched a medical show um, like Grey's Anatomy or ER, or I think there's one called Chicago Med now, um, when, when they do the little clear thing and they put the paddles on the patient's chest and they kind of shock them, that's what's happening here. And the reason I looked into this data was I had a friend um, who was my age, this is about 10 years ago, she did go into cardiac arrest and she had to get defibrillated. And I was actually curious, and she's fine now, let me start with, she is fine. Um, actually, she, I mean, she's totally fine. She has a pacemaker in as a result of this, um, and she's my age, so she was, and this happened in her 30s. But I was curious after all of this, um, how, how, how lucky was she? Like, what was her survival rate um, predicted to be uh, and so I found this data here, all right? So if we, if we again zoom out, I have two numerical variables and they're right here, right? We see that there is survival rate in percent. There are the units. And we have that our X is this average called a shock time, all right? So let me put here that we have two numerical variables. We know we're gonna be in a chapter 12 problem. And it says find the least squares regression line. Now, line is the key phrase here. So I basically want the LSRL. That's what that acronym is short for. So get me the predicting equation. And I'll tell you, we're gonna predict her survival rate a little bit further down the line, all right? A little down, further down the page, I'm gonna find out, or I'm gonna show you what, what were her chances when this happened to her based on this data. Okay. So whenever you want to find the LSRL, the first thing to start with is, is putting your data into some lists. So let me fire up my calculator and I've got some old data in here, no problem. Let me clear this out. I'm actually going to clear all of my lists out. Ooh, don't know what I did. Let me clear all of my lists out at the same time and put this data in. So 90, okay. Okay, so there we go. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do, I, after I do data entry, I wanna do my stat plot, it's ready to go. Okay, so when I take a look at that, well, two things are popping up that I notice. First, I do see that the data looks negative and linear, but in, in case anyone noticed, did you see this line coming through my data? That means I forgot to clear out the last problem I worked on, and there's that LSRL hanging out in Y1. This is from the data in example nine. So if you ever get a line coming through your graph, it means you didn't clear something out from before. All right, so I've got this. Now, as I look at it, again, I, I see linear data. I wanna slap that model on top of it. And this linear model is called the LSRL. So let's go run this. So we're gonna go here and I'm gonna do stat calc eight. And then there's always three things to feed your calculator, L1, L2, and then good old Y1. So Y1 begins with bars. We go over to Y variables and then hit enter, enter, enter. And again, I'm gonna copy down the first three lines here. And I'm gonna talk about how do we go from the first three lines in your calculator 
to a midterm level answer. All right, and we'll keep um, R and R squared in mind, but let me write these first three lines down. I'll go two decimal places. You can go as many as you want. That wouldn't be 2.9, hold on. If I round this, it would be negative 9.30. All right, so with that, let's move this over to a midterm level answer, okay? So the first thing I want us to do, instead of writing this general A plus BX, plug in your numbers for your particular problem. And again, I don't wanna see plus negative when we get to the slope. I, I just want you to write the subtraction sign. So we would say Y equals 101.328 minus 9.3X. And just take a moment and make sure that you have the x here, all right? Sometimes we forget to, to include that x, so let's make sure that's in there. And actually, if I'm being consistent, I'm just noticing I did three decimals here and only two here. So let me just change this up to be consistent. I'll do three decimals. So this would be negative nine point, this would then be 296, all right. All right, so we've got that. Still not midterm level yet, but we're getting there. The other thing I need us to do is add the hat on, okay? So we've got two of the things done. The last thing, because this has context, we're actually gonna swap out the letters X and Y for the variable names. So I'm gonna go a step further and say, I can predict survival rate all right, that's what that symbol means. I will predict survival rate by the equation 101.328 minus 9.296, and then the x variable is call to shock time. Okay, so there we go. If you tell me how long it took them between you going into shock and them calling you, whether it took two minutes, three minutes, whatever, then I'll be able to predict your survival rate. And I think you can see here, right, if I try and look at these ordered pairs, you can tell the longer it takes them to get to you, right, the more you flatline, the less your likelihood of surviving. Because even right here, if we were to just kind of pick apart, and I'm picking on this ordered pair just because it's in front of me, seven comma 30, right, the units here are minutes, the units here are percent, this is saying if it takes them seven minutes to get to you before they can defibrillate you, you have about a 30% chance of living. All right, and I'll tell you for my friend, she was here, she was at five minutes. And we're gonna predict what her survival rate was in just a moment, but we're, we're not there yet. So I found the equation of the LSRL. Now in terms of what is the slope and what is the y-intercept, let me put these down here. So my slope in this case was negative 9.296. All right, and my y-intercept is an ordered pair. It's 0, 101.328. All right, so going back to our math days, we got a slope, we got a y-intercept, and, and then we're going to start interpreting these. So in Chapter 12, there are four statistics that you'll need to interpret. We've already done the correlation coefficient. Now we're gonna pick up slope and y-intercept. So these are another two interpretations that we're gonna come up with. We're gonna focus first on slope, and then we'll head over to y-intercept. So let me scooch this all the way up, and then we'll get going on this. Okay, so here we go. So when you're interpreting the word slope, always use the words predicted average, all right? And I say predicted because this is a predicting equation. These are not actual y values. We're going to predict an average because, again, in your math classes, we call the slope an average rate of change. Okay? So when it comes to your free response and I ask you to interpret a slope, you will say for every one unit increase in x, the predicted average, and you will 
elect either increase or decrease depending on if the slope is negative, but the predicted average increase or decrease in y is blank units. So that's a template. We will fill this in for every single problem we have. When it comes to the y-intercept, we're always going to use the word predicted in our free response. And we will say when x is 0 units, the predicted y value is blank units, and we'll see what that is. So let's go through this and try and make some sense out of the slope and as much sense as we can out of the y-intercept. It's harder to make sense out of the y-intercept because usually it's just utter nonsense, and I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So if we take a look at our slope, our slope in this case was negative 9.296. All right, so there's a property in math. If you want to make any number into a fraction, you're more than welcome to, as long as you keep that denominator at 1. All right, and when we go back to our math days, slope was always rise over run, right? It was y variables over x variables, or change in y over change in x. There was that formula that this was y2 minus y1 in ratio to x2 minus x1. But again, let's go back to the units. The y units are always on top, right? And what were our y units for this problem? Well, our y variable was survival rate. So the units up here are percent, all right? And in the denominator always lives our x because it's rise over run, y over x. So let's think about our x variable. It was average call to shock time. What were the units on this? This was minutes. So let's start to think about what on earth does it mean, negative 9.296% per one minute? What is that trying to tell us? So you, maybe you can start to feel out. Survival rate decreases by about 9.296% for every one more minute that you're flatlining before they can shock you with that defibrillator. So let's try and take these numbers and these units and plug them into this template. All right, so where it says for every one unit increase in x, we will say here for every one minute increase in call to shock time, right? Every one minute increase in call to shock time, the predicted average, now we will opt for decrease in y because our slope is negative. So the predicted average decrease in survival rate is 9.296%. So let me write that up so we can all take it in. So for every one minute increase in call to shock time, the predicted average decrease in survival rate And then we have is 9.296, and the units on the y's were percent. Okay. And we're not saying that for every minute it's exactly true that you lose a survival rate of 9.3%. Some minutes are more important than others, but on the average, it's 9.3%. And if we scooch back down here, or I should say scooch back up, you can see that that's not, it's not true for every single minute. Right here I went four minutes and I lost 45%. Then I went one minute and I lost 15%. Or here I went three minutes and I lost 3%. So it's not that every minute is exactly 9.3%, but they were averaging out to 9.3%. And really, I mean, we can see it. Your survival rate goes down if that, if that average call to shock time goes up. Okay, all right. So there's one of our interpretations. The other one that we have to get through is the y-intercept. So let's write the y-intercept again. All right, so my y-intercept was 0, 101.328. Okay. And the y-intercepts are usually fun to interpret because they're just nonsense. So let's think about the units on this. This is the x variable. This was the y variable. So what were the units on x? This was minutes. What are the units on y? 
percent. Okay, so I've got zero minutes and I've got 101.328 percent. So I can plug this in now to this template when call to shock time is zero minutes the predicted survival rate is 101.328 percent. So what that's saying is if you go into cardiac arrest and someone is right behind you with a defibrillator and shocks you, you're gonna come back stronger than ever. You're, you're gonna super live past this one. All right, so let's write this up. So for every, not for every, excuse me, I'm looking at the slope interpretation. All right, here we go. When, when call to shock time, is zero minutes, all right? The predicted survival rate is 101.328%. Okay. So between these two interpretations, there's a couple things I want to point out. You can see that there are units in both of these, right? You can see minute here, and you can see minutes here. You can see percent here and percent here, right? So they both have the units for both numerical variables. You can also see the word predicted, because that's all we're doing with this, this LSRL. All we're doing is predicting, all right? So predicted is here and predicted is here. The word that the slope always has that the y-intercept doesn't is average. And that's because again, back in your math days, if you talk about a slope between two points, that is an average rate of change. And that's what we're talking about for the slope, this rate of change for every one minute extra that it takes them to call, call you and shock you, you're gonna, your survival rate changes by about 9.3%. All right, so those are your templates for interpreting your slope and y-intercept. So when I ask you to do that, which I will, it'll be on a free response question, have this template ready to go. All right, and then you plug in the units for your x variable, the context for your x variable. Decide if it's increase or decrease based on whether the slope's positive or not. Tell me the context for the y's, the slope, and give me the units for the y's. Over here, you plug in your context for your x variable, your units for your x variable context for your y variable, the number of the y-intercept, and then the units for the y variable, okay? All right, so we've got that. Let's go a step further and start using this LSRL to predict. So if I take a look at this next question, it says use the line, right? So right there, use the LSRL to predict the sudden cardiac arrest survival rate for a community with a mean call to shock time of five minutes. So let's take a look at minutes, right? Minutes, is that an X value or is that a Y value? That is an X value. And it's asking us right here, predict survival rate. So if I go back to my, my LSRL, let me scooch this up a little bit. If I go back to my LSRL, that's literally what this is saying. I can predict survival rate. That's what that symbol means, predict survival rate if you tell me the call to shock time. And this was the one for my friend, right? She was down for five minutes before the ambulance got to her. So we're about to plug in five minutes right here, or the number five, and see what number pops back out. All right, so let, let's try it. So let me move over here so that we can take a look at these problems. So I'm saying I can predict her survival rate. Okay, it's got the hat with the equation 101.328 minus nine, 0.296 times five. All right, let's see what, what pops back out with that X value of five. So here we go. So I am going to do 101.328 minus nine, 0.296. I think I left off the six again. I've been having trouble with that. Just noticing on my paper. So 9.296, and then I'm gonna multiply that by five because that's the X value, 9.296 times five. What was her survival rate? It was about 
Oh, sorry, that was my calculator. That is really loud. I think that's the second time I've done that this chapter. All right, so let me get this back in order. I think that's good enough. Okay, so that is gonna be 54. I'll just go 848%, okay? Now, I, I didn't tell her about any of this till way after it happened, but I mean, she, she it was a health scare. Like, uh, it was, it was not, she was not out of the woods for a little while after this happened. All right, so that's great. Um, let's try it here. So now, should this line be used to predict sudden cardiac arrest survival rate for a community with an average called a shock time of 20 minutes? Why or why not? Well, let's crunch this number and then I think you're gonna see the funky thing happen. So let's say I went survival rate. And this time I plugged in 20 minutes. Now I'm just gonna call up what I did before. I'm not gonna retype everything, but if you hit second and the enter key, it calls up the screen, the, the um, command you did before. I'm just gonna change the five to 20. And I want you to see we're getting negative 84.592. So let me write that down, negative 84.592. All right, and let's just think about that number for a little bit, right? 101, or negative 84.592%. So this is saying if it takes 20 minutes for them to get to you, you have a chance of surviving of negative 84, or almost negative 85%. So it's utter nonsense, right? This is not even possible. Nonsense answer, right? What does that mean? You die and then you take almost somebody else with you? It doesn't make any sense. And, and let's talk about why this is a bad idea. So I'm gonna go back to my original data and I want you to keep in mind, I plugged in an X value of five and I plugged in an X value of 20, okay? So why does this not really work? Well, if you look at your initial data, all right, if we take a look at our initial data values, they were spread out, at least in the X direction from two to 12. So when I was predicting here in, at when X was five, I had some data to back my argument, right? Because I knew the number at two and I knew the number at six. So five was well inside that range. But are you with me that I was predicting at 20? It was way out over here in the X direction. And I had no data on that for eight minutes, right? The last data value I had was two. So predicting for 20 is well outside of that data range. And we have a vocab term for that that's called extrapolation. So when you plug in an X value that is not within your initial data range, you are extrapolating. So at 20 minutes, we were extrapolating and you can see we have full model breakdown, all right? Because that, that negative 85% number, is, it's just bad news bears. And that happens sometimes. Actually, it happens a lot. We just have to be aware of it. So I'm gonna head back over here and say, hey, if we take a look at this, right? Our initial data was from two to 12 minutes. 20 minutes is way outside of that observed data set. So our LSRL has become useless, which is referred to as model breakdown. So let's just take note of this, right? So our data was from two to 12 minutes. All right, 20 minutes is way outside of that, that data set. And again, we have a term for that. I'm running out of space over here, so I'm just gonna write it on this side. We would call this model breakdown, all right? Our model is useless at this point. And, and we've been extrapolating, all right? So in terms of the official definition, the process of predicting inside of the observed X values observed in the data is called interpolation. The process of predicting outside of the observed X values 
that are observed. I know that's observed, X values observed in the data is called extrapolation. But basically when you're predicting inside of the observed values, we call it interpolation. If you're predicting outside of the observed values, we call it extrapolation. So just to recap, this part here, this is extrapolation. This is interpolation. And if we go all the way back to the y-intercept, all right, think about this. We were predicting when x was 0, all right? So if we look back at our data set, all right, let me get that in view. If we were predicting for x being 0, that's also extrapolation. And you saw that that, that, that y-intercept is also nonsense, right? So this is also extrapolation. Okay. And it's nice and lucrative to become better and better and better at extrapolation, but you can see it's pretty hard. We run into model breakdown. All right, so we're going to turn this off for a minute. I'm going to go to my calculator and show you how you can do all of this stuff on your calculator. All right, thanks guys. Bye. Hey, Math 43. I know we just went through example 10, um, mostly by hand once we got to this bottom part here, um, but I want you to see how you can actually use your calculator to make all of these predictions. So let's just have a combo about that, but we're going to go back through from the beginning, okay? So, oops, let me scooch this back up. All right, so I always put my data in my list. That's always my first thing that I start with. And then the next thing I always do, I check my stat plots. And again, for chapter 12, this is pretty much the only plot that we're ever going to make. So once you turn it on and have L1 against L2 with a scatter plot, you're good to go. And then I'm going to hit zoom 9. Okay. And I can see I have a pretty strong negative relationship, right? So as time, or called a shock time, increases, survival rate decreases. And again, I mean, if we just take a step back, that, that makes sense. If it takes them longer and longer to defibrillate you, that's a bad thing. Your heart is not beating, so you're, you're not doing so well, right? Oxygen does not get into your brain, all of that. So your chances of making it go down. Okay, so I've got my scatter plot. The next thing I want to do, I'll go back home, and then let's run linear regression, right? And it's always those same three things. We'll go stat calc 8, L1, L2, Y1. So here we go, stat calc option 8. Let's go L1 comma L2, tack on that comma, and then let's try and find our Y1. So I'm going to hit VARS. I'm going to go to the right. I will always be in function mode. And then I'm going to hit enter. So we'll hit enter for Y1 and enter again. So there's our slope and our Y-intercept. Right? And I have a pretty strong negative relationship, which is what I would expect just based on what my scatter plot looked like. So let me hit zoom 9 now, and then we can see there's, there's that least squares regression line. There's the LSRL going through my scatter plot. Okay, great. So we can interpret the slope and the y-intercept. That, that we would just do by hand, but I want to focus on these next two questions, saying use this line to predict the survival rate for a community with a mean called a shock time of five minutes. So again, we did this by hand. We plugged five into the LSRL as our x value, which is great, but you can do this on your calculator as well. So if you look over the trace key, written in blue is the word calc, and that, that stands for calculate. So let's hit second and trace. And if you look at option one, it says calculate a value, and that's exactly what we want to do. I gave you an x value of five minutes, and I would like for you to get me a predicted y value. So hit enter. And then it will prompt you, what x value would you like me to enter? And I would like you to predict for five minutes, right? That's what I was asking. What was the predicted survival rate at five minutes? And when you hit enter, you, you get 54.85. Now, that's a percent. And that's actually a, the more accurate answer, um, just depending on where you rounded when you were doing it by hand. So here it is, 54.85%. So if it takes them five minutes before they can defibrillate you, you have about a 55% chance of survival, okay? Now I wanna try that for this last question or this next question when we extrapolated. Um, I wanna try it for 20 minutes. 
and something's going to go wrong in our calculator and then I want to show you how we can fix it. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's try to predict for 20 minutes. So when I want to calculate a value, I will hit second and trace. That will call up my calculate screen or my calculate menu. I would like to calculate a value so you can either hit enter or the number one. And now I'm going to plug in 20 because that's what this, this um, question was asking, right? Now predict at 20 minutes, all right? So when I head back over here and I hit enter, I'm gonna get an error, okay? And we're, gonna, we're not gonna quit, right? We've got growth mindsets, I hope, um, and we're gonna go to this error. And it, your calculator is freaking out over the number 20. And I want you to think about this, right? So here we go, x equaling 20. What were the units on 20? It was 20 minutes, right? Because this is an x value. So let's go to our window and I want to show you why your calculator is not happy about this. If you look at your x min and max, it's going from 1 to 13. Okay? And we are trying to predict at 20. So 20 is outside of this x range. Okay? And your calculator, when it does zoom 9, it's just using your x values, right? So our, our x values, we had data between 2 and 12 minutes. So your calculator just went one minute on each side of that to set up the x-axis. All right, and you can see here, my Y values went from two to 90, and my calculator went, I don't know, it was looking like 14 units on either side to set up my Y axis. We're not really worried about the Y axis right now, we're worried about this X value of 20. So what you need to adjust here is your X max, and you can pick any number you want that's larger than 20. I'm gonna say 25, okay? It doesn't have to be 25, it could be 21, it could be 22, it can be 75. I'm just gonna pick 25, okay? Now, if you adjust your window, do not hit zoom nine. If you hit zoom nine, this is gonna reset right back to 13. So let me hit graph, okay? And you can see I have a lot more space over here on the right side, because I'm not cutting off at X being 13, I'm going all the way out to X being 25. So let's rerun that entire sequence again on our calculator and try and predict the y value at 20 minutes. So we're gonna hit second and trace. Right? I'm gonna try and calculate a value, so option one, or hit the enter key. Let's plug in 20, let's hit enter, and then you see it there, right? Negative 84.58. And we talked about how before, this is extrapolation, this is a nonsense answer, you can't have a negative 84% chance of living. I don't even know what that means, like you come back and you owe somebody most of your life. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. And that's, that's extrapolation, that happens all the time. But I just want you to see that now, now that we've extended our window to include 20, now I can go through here and I can predict at 20. And you might be saying, well, why can't, why can't I see this ordered pair? Why is there nothing flashing on the calculator? Well, take a look at your Y value, right? Your Y value is negative 84. Let's go back to our window. Do we see how our lowest Y value is negative 12? So we can't see that y value. If, if you wanted to, if you want to see that ordered pair, you don't have to do this because we already have our answer about negative 84.58%. But if you want to actually see it, then you're going to have to lower your y min. And what did we just say it was like negative 84? Let me go to negative 100. Okay. If I hit graph, and this is going to really scrunch that screen. Okay, here we go. Second, trace, option one. Let's plug in 20 again. And you can barely see it blinking, but can you kind of see that little dot right there blinking, blinking right in here? That is my ordered pair. All right? And it's even hard for me to see it because of the way your calculator writes this in here. Um, if I really wanted to see it, I guess um, I can lower the Y min. Let's, let's just make it go a little lower so we can see it. Like maybe get negative 120. We can try it in there. All right, here we go. We're going to do this whole string again. Second, trace, option one. Let's plug in 20, let's hit enter. Now I can see it really blinking, right? So now you can see everything. And again, seeing it isn't necessarily the biggest deal, but I, I just want you to learn how to manipulate your calculator as well. So we were able to do a good chunk of this question on our calculator, and these answers that your calculator are giving you back are actually more accurate or more precise than the ones you did by hand, because there's no decimal round off here. All right, thanks guys, see ya.